About 180 million years ago, mammals arose from a reptile-like lineage around the same time as true dinosaurs. Approximately 80 million years ago, the genetic lineage of elephants split from primates. Upon the rise of humankind, elephants were instantly revered for their sheer size and power. However, over time, they were recognized for their usefulness. First discovered by the West in 327 BC during Alexander the Great's conquest of India, this tranquil giant has been worshipped, revered, and even used in combat, all thanks to its features that have developed over the span of 55 million years. Trunks were used as history's first forklift, and sadly, tusks have now been recognized as a source of ivory. It was from Latin origins that we get the name elephant. Appropriately, the name comes from Latin words Ella, meaning arch, and fant, meaning huge. Today, elephants solely reside in the eastern hemisphere, with the African and Asian elephants existing to this day. However, in the past few decades, the ivory trade has brought their population to a dangerously low point, and has only recently begun to stabilize. Even so, human efforts must increase drastically still to preserve the rich evolutionary history of Earth's gentle giant. Many differences exist between the two genuses of surviving elephants. African elephants have larger ears and are heavier and taller than Asian elephants. Asian elephants have evolved to be mostly tuskless to avoid the poaching of ivory traders, while African elephants have retained their tusks. Another crucial evolutionary feature of both genuses is their ability of infrasonic hearing and moaning. This ability to hear sound waves below our own hearing level is a crucial means of communication for elephants out on the wide open plains. It allows them to talk to one another without alerting predators to their position, as the predators can't hear their communication. These evolutionary traits have developed over the span of 80 million years of adaptation and five major transformations. The most ancient of these transformations was that of the Merotherium. This creature roamed the earth in the late Eocene period of 37 to 35 million years ago and is native to the swamps of northern Africa. It had a size and weight of approximately 8 feet long and a few hundred pounds and lived off of a diet of plants. The Merotherium's long, flexible upper lip and snout point to the evolutionary origins of the elephant's trunk, the same way its long frontal incisors can be considered ancestral to tusks. However, the similarities and there. Like a small hippopotamus, Merotherium probably spent its time half submerged in swamps eating soft, semi aquatic vegetation. The genus of Merotherium contained five species Leonzi, Gracile, Trigodon, Andrusi, and Chibura Muri. The second most ancient elephant was the Paleomastodon, who, like the Merotherium, inhabited the Earth in the late Eocene period of approximately 35 million years ago, also in the swamps of northern Africa. It possessed numerous qualities, similar to modern elephants as well as previous ancestors, with long column-like legs, tusks curving down from the upper jaw, a trunk albeit substantially shorter than modern elephants, as well as a shorter height standing at just 2 meters, compared to today's African elephants at 3.3 meters. Paleomastodon weighed approximately 2 tons, again minuscule compared to the 6.6 .6 tons of African elephants. The mutation of curved tusks allowed Paleomastodon to dredge plants from the flooded riversides and lake beds. Despite their nomenclature, their relation to mastodons is distant, as they inhabit regions on completely separate continents. Other elephant ancestors living in the late Eocene period included the Danotherium and Phiomia. Gomphotherium were more recent ancestors of the elephant, living 15 to 5 million years ago, from the early Miocene to the early Pliocene. Continuing with a familiar trend, the Gomphotherium grew since the Paleomastodon, standing anywhere from 2.5 to 3 meters in height and weighing 4 to 5 tons, creeping ever closer to the size of today's African elephant. These creatures developed off of previous tusks and trunks, developing four-pronged, scooped-shaped tusks, with two on the upper jaw and two on the lower. Unlike modern elephants, the tusks were coated with enamel. These tusks were used for dredging plants from flooded riversides and lake beds, 
which was a major advantage over early forms of tusks. Much like their previous ancestors, their trunk was short, as indicated by an elongated and low skull. The genus immigrated into Asia, Europe, and Africa after a drop in sea level allowed them to cross over. Once there, these creatures inhabited dry wooded areas near lakes. Mastodons, who roamed the earth likely past the Pleistocene period even, were similar to modern elephants in many ways. A characteristic feature of the mastodons, which like all elephant ancestors fed on leaves, is their distinctive nature of the grinding teeth. The teeth are much smaller and less complex, however, than those in the true elephants. The prominent upper tusks were long and grouped parallel to each other with an upward curvature. Short lower tusks were present in males but absent in females. Mastodons were shorter than modern elephants but were heavily built, although the skull was lower and flatter and of generally simpler construction than that of modern elephants, it was similar in appearance. The ears were smaller and not as prominent than those of elephants. The body was relatively long and the legs were short, massive, and pillar-like. Mastodons were covered with long reddish-brown hair. Unlike modern elephants, this hair was an adaption to the Ice Age climate and colder temperatures of the Western Hemisphere. However, mastodon remains are quite common throughout the world. The reason for their extinction is not quite clear, but in North America at least, human hunting may have played a role. Woolly mammoths survived in North America until between 10,500 and 7,600 years ago. While there are many different kinds of mammoth, the woolly mammoth is by far the most well-known, with the most abundant and best-preserved fossils of any other species. Mammoths started out in Africa, spreading into southern Europe and eventually Canada. Upon the coming of the Ice Age, woolly mammoths adapted to the extreme cold through small genetic mutations that may have changed the way oxygen was delivered by its blood keeping the animal warm. The last mammoths survived until just 4,300 years ago, before finally succumbing to extinction, from the effects of inbreeding and the loss of genetic diversity. Woolly mammoths were closely related to today's Asian elephants. They looked a lot like their modern cousins, except for one major difference. They were covered in a thick coat of brown hair to keep them warm in their home on the frigid Arctic plains. Their large curved tusks may have been used for fighting or as digging tool, for forging meals of shrubs, grasses, roots, and other small plants from under the snow. Woolly mammoths were around 4 meters tall and weighed around 5.44 tons, which is nearly identical to modern elephants. Anatomically, woolly mammoths were nearly identical to their modern elephants, aside from smaller ears to prevent heat loss, a lump of fat on the back, and longer tusks. The lineage of elephants is one of the most fascinating, dramatic, and challenging evolutionary journeys of any animal. Over 10 completely separate organisms, spanning 55 million years, shape the creatures that dominate the land today. Due to the ivory trade and subsequent poaching of the recent decades, elephants have been hunted to near extinction. Human efforts must be increased to ensure that this rich history does not go to waste, and luckily in recent years they have. Populations are rebounding, with many elephants under formal protection and an international ban on ivory. Mankind has helped to ensure this evolutionary step for elephants is not the last.